So have you ever looked into an electrical control system and thought, what goes into creating one of these things? And where would I even start if I wanted to get into controls and automation and master design, panel building and commissioning? Well, that's what I'm gonna help you with in this video. And I'm gonna walk you through the five essential steps towards becoming a control system specialist, no matter what industry or sector you're looking to get into, whether that's smart home, commercial BMS or BEMS, or if you're looking to get into industrial controls and instrumentation. And these steps haven't been thrown together willy-nilly. This has been thought about for the last year and a half as I craft a training program, helping people get into controls and automation. So this really has been thought about a lot. It's been tested with various coaching clients already and really is the right journey to take in not only acquiring the right skill set, but being able to truly master each topic at each stage. And this really is a step-by-step -step approach with each step building on the previous step, meaning that you can't really jump ahead to step three, for example, if you haven't already mastered step one or two. And as mentioned, this really has taken a lot of thought. This really is the most logical, time efficient and productive sequence that I've found and some of my coaching clients have found and some of the people in the free community have found. And if you wanted to join that free community and receive free coaching and guidance of some of the things that we're talking about in this video, then visit the link in the description and you'll be able to join our free community for free. And this five step training path has been designed for those really looking to become well-rounded control and automation engineers, whether that's working for a business as an employee or as a business owner looking to be able to deliver every single step needed in a control and automation project. And this really is geared towards any ability. So it starts with the foundation. So if you're brand new and have little experience, then you can start at step one and build up to step two, three and further on from there. Or whether you've already had a certain amount of experience already, you can come in at step two, providing you're confident at step one and start at step two, go to step three and build on from there. So it really is designed for anyone at any stage with any ability. So the first step, and this is the most important and probably the most difficult step, but it's needed as the foundation for everything else to build upon. Without this, you haven't got a place to build upon. So it's essential that you master this step first before moving any further. And that is understanding system schematics. And understanding system schematics really gives you a bird's eye conceptual understanding of any type of control or automation project. So if you're not there on site and you don't have like the actual live system working in front of you, which isn't always available, especially as you get to the later stages, you need to understand a project off-site and being able to read and interpret system schematics will enable you to build up this conceptual understanding of the system in your head and really understand what it's all about and getting into then how it works. So this really is the what. And just some examples of some employed positions where you'd need this level of understanding to be proficient in would be that of a maintenance engineer or technician. I think it'd be very useful for electrical contractors that work in the BMS industry or industrial industry. And also, if you're like me, a service engineer. So had I learned system schematics earlier on in my career and really mastered them, it would have made my service engineering time a lot easier and less stressful and enable me to progress onto some of these other stages a lot quicker. And if you're a business owner, you're obviously going to have to know each of these stages to deliver successful projects to your customers. So business owners, really, you need to understand all of these stages. But as we go through, I'll give you some ideas of employment positions if you're just looking to gain employment with these skill sets. So the second stage now is control panel build and wiring. And now we're getting into the how. So how do you put together one of these control systems that we've just learned about? What are the details that go into it? How do we build them? How do we wire them? What are the components? How do those components 
interact with each other and we're really getting into the detail now of yeah how these systems are built and put together so some examples of employment positions would be really that of control panel wiremen panel builders and electrical fitters so now on to step three and this is really understanding system testing and fault finding and this again is building on the how so how should that system work how should it function how do we fix things if they're not working as they should but we're not really going to know how to go about approaching this if we first don't know what this system is about and get a good or have a good conceptual understanding of it and we don't know how necessarily it's been put together and wired and what the components do then we're not really going to know how to effectively fault find or how to test things and how things should work so you'll start to see how we need previous steps in this journey to enable us to be proficient at the step that we're talking about and this is a good example and some examples of positions and again i think everyone should have this skill set but just some examples would be that of a commissioning engineer a maintenance engineer and technician and also again electrical contractors in the BMS and industrial field. Now onto step four, and this is understanding, specifying and design. Now we're getting into the why. Why are things designed? Why are things specified? And although this stage in a project chronologically is the first thing, so the first thing in the project life cycle we get into the specifying and the design. But when we're learning and people are getting trained and coached, you can't really understand what needs to be specified and why something is designed the way it is if we first don't have a conceptual understanding of what the system is and what it's all about, the details of how it's wired and put together and then how it should be tested and fault found and how it should be functioning. But if we don't have those core things first, then we're never going to be able to just jump straight in and understand why we design things the way they are. So again, you see how each stage builds upon the previous stage. But yeah, now we're starting to understand how to spec or why are we specifying this part and why is the system designed in the way it is and why has it been built the way it has been built. And it might be pretty obvious, but some examples here would be that of a design engineer project manager so someone that's managing the project really does need to know why it's been specified why it's been designed the way it has and also at this stage we're getting into the realms of control engineers well really a controls engineer should know every stage um, of this process but this is where a controls engineer is really being put to work now the final step that is plc programming and it always makes me laugh because People always want to jump ahead to this stage, this glamorous stage where people see engineers rock up on site, whip open their laptop, press a few buttons, and then they've got a working control system. But what they don't realize is nine times out of 10, or certainly for the good engineers, the good commissioning engineers, they've been through all these previous stages. They know what systems are about. They understand how they've been built and wired. They understand all the components and how they work. They understand how things should be testing or how they should test out. And if they don't, how to rectify and fault find those issues. They understand why things are the way they are and why things have been specified this way rather than this way. So they understand ultimately everything that underpins the PLC programming. So to be a good commissioning engineer or PLC programmer, you need all of these previous stages to know what you're doing in the PLC programming stage. And I've seen it time and time again where engineers jump ahead, you know, they, they skip the fundamentals and they basically get completely overwhelmed and lost. They might understand, they might get through five days of training at a manufacturer of how to program using a certain system, but let's say they do get as far as delivering a project, they then don't really know why the programming is the way it is and when issues arise which they always do they become very overwhelmed and stressed out because they don't really know how to systematically break things down 
into these different stages to rectify the issues. And then the systems end up being very bad experience for the client and it's just it's just not good. So it really does pay in the long term to understand all these previous stages before you get to the PLC programming. And some examples of employed positions might be pretty obvious, but PLC and SCADA engineers, automation engineers, and also electrical controls engineers. And like I said, if you are a business owner and you're looking to deliver control and automation projects, whether that's smart home, whether that's BMS, whether that's industrial controls, doesn't matter what sector, but you need to understand all of these steps to be able to effectively deliver and support these types of projects. So if you're a yeah, business owner, you really need to know all of this. And as I mentioned, guys, if you're looking for help, training, workshops, coaching, mentoring, guidance in any of these areas, just click that link in the description and join our free community and we'll help you as best we can get you on the right stage of this journey and help you progress into the industry. I'll see you in the next video.